Good evening, everybody. Hi. Oh, you're a chatty bunch, aren't you? <laughs> Hard to imagine why. <laughs> Hello. My name is Sarah Arbo, and I'm delighted to be here and to welcome everyone to the Walkley's Foundation Mid-Year Celebration of Journalism. Thank you all for being here. It's wonderful to be in a room with so much amazing talent and to celebrate all your incredible achievements. First of all, of course, I'd like to acknowledge and pay my respects to the traditional owners of the land upon which we meet, the elders past and present of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. This is a night for celebrating some of the most exciting work in our industry, from freelancers, those leading the way for women and diversity, those who capture our culture and the rights of workers. Tonight's winners and nominees are among the finest and most innovative storytellers we have in Australian media. Each one of you here tonight is here to celebrate the incredible achievements of Australian journalists. And for those in the industry, you know just how tough this past year has been. Innovate, pivot, adapt, whatever overused term you choose. We've done it all. While it's been challenging, it's highlighted just how important it is to support one another. We all know what it's like to be a young journalist finding your feet in this industry. Sometimes all it takes is a little nudge in the right direction and that's all the encouragement you need to deliver your best product to the public. The future of Australian journalism is in very safe hands if this room is anything to go by. Now we've just seen some of the incredible Nikon Walkley photographic entries from last year capturing striking moments across Australia and the world. So many contrasts in landscapes, experiences and emotions. Photojournalism is indeed about telling all of those stories. The Walkley Foundation, of course, champions great Australian storytelling. Please welcome Walkley Chief Executive Louisa Graham to the stage. Thanks, hello and welcome to everyone here. Well, the novelty hasn't worn off quite yet. It's such a delight to stand, stand here and to be able to raise a glass. And let's hope that that lasts. I know I was talking to some of our um, Brisbane colleagues who were heading straight to the airport after this to uh, avoid any border closures. So these are difficult times that we live in. In a time when journalism is being challenged, the Walkley Foundation offers strength, stability and continuity. And our key objectives are to encourage excellence and best practice through our national awards program, to elevate the craft through professional development, to support and value journalism, and to ensure organisational good health and good governance. This is important because a strong, fair and diverse media is vital and in strengthening and sustaining our democracy. We need to ensure that great journalism is recognised and rewarded, that journalists understand the ethics of their craft and are provided with career pathways, that institutional knowledge and best practices are maintained, and that there is a diversity and opportunity for those entering the industry, and that media organisations value the craft of journalism in relation to profits. We aim to do all that while working independently with media organisations to encourage journalism of the highest standard. We work with partners to administer specialist awards, including the Media Diversity Australia, Our Watch, and for the very first time this year, supported by the International Red Committee of the Red Cross, a humanitarian storytelling award. You'll find a complete list in the programs available around the room and on our website. So please do make sure you pick up one of the programs. I think on the front of the program is a compliment of our 2019 winners, which was the first time we we're actually able to come together. Our ceremony tonight is capped off with the announcement of our Young Journalist of the Year. And we've been fortunate to have this program supported by John B. Fairfax and his family through the Jib Foundation since 2017. And their support has allowed us to make entry more accessible, provide mentoring for winners, and an overseas vocational trip for the overall young journalist. Well, we're delighted to some now announce some pretty big news tonight. The John B. Fairfax family has pledged to continue their support for our Young Australian Journalist Program over the next 10 years with a gift of $1 million. Yeah. 
This is an extraordinary legacy that reflects the culture that was started long ago in one of the country's best known media empires, Fairfax Media. Thank you, John B. Fairfax and family, for your outstanding contribution. And you'll hear from John a little bit later. Well, our new programs for 2021, we're excited to be rolling out with the support of University of New South Wales and Google, courses designed to guide the next generation of leaders within our industry. And like everyone, we got a lot of practice using Zoom last year, and webinars have become a big part of our program offering. And a highlight has been collaborating with Mia on a series exploring the journalist code of ethics, which is pretty important. Um, and the next one of that is on July the 1st. We also have a new partnership with the Scanlon Foundation and again Media Diversity Australia on a series on best practice reporting on diversity and inclusion. You may have also heard that we'll be administering on behalf of Facebook a $15 million fund over three years aimed at supporting public interest journalism and sustainability for regional newsrooms. And there'll be more details on that program released soon. Community regional journalism is a big focus for us this year. And we may just make it to Tamworth in November to host the Walkley Awards and a summit bringing together all the key players to talk about why regional excellence is so critical so critical to the communities it serves. And the summit will be streamed, but if you're able to join us in Tamworth, it's, it promises to be a, a celebration of a weekend to remember, I'm sure. And let's not forget, Walkley entries are open on July 1. So make sure you subscribe to our mailing list to keep up to date with all the details. And thank you to all our partners for your continued support. We couldn't do it without you. And you can see all those organisations that are involved in the mid-year celebration on the screens. And we'll be hearing from a number of them tonight as they share with us their commitment to journalism. I also want to acknowledge Mia, our trustees, the amazing Walkley staff, and the tireless contribution of our volunteer directors, our public fund committee, and the Walkley judging board, who are all drawn from across the industry and uh, listed in your programs if you, you want further details. So, some housekeeping. If you are presenting tonight or you are a finalist, do not leave the room. Don't miss your big moment. <laughs> uh, the awards go pretty quickly, so, so please stay around. And good luck if you're nominated. Take a moment to feel proud of the wonderful work that you've done, the impact that you've had, and whatever the result, have a wonderful night. Now it's my pleasure to invite to the stage Lenore Taylor, editor of The Guardian and chair of the Walkley Judging Board. Hi everyone, and as Louise has said, what a treat it is to be able to gather together in person and raise a glass, it's fabulous. I always love this mid-year celebration because it really does remind us of the amazing talent that is coming through the ranks. The finalists and the winners that you'll hear about tonight in the Walkley's Young Journalists of the Year Awards are all 28 years or younger. That seems impossibly young to some of us. <laughs> but I have to say that the standard of their work and the imagination and um, the ethics and the commitment really bodes well for the future of our profession. Of course, we're also here to recognise some of the most experienced local reporters and writers and storytellers who are the champions of their specialist areas, those who are doing strong work outside of newsrooms as freelancers, those who are leading the way for women's equality in this industry, those who are doing outstanding reporting to advance diversity in our media, which is so important, or who are nominated tonight for work in arts journalism or criticism or industrial relations reporting, coverage of violence against women, humanitarian storytelling. Um, I say this at every one of these ceremonies, but we all want to win one of these awards because we know that they're the benchmark of excellence in our profession. That's why we're all here and that's why we're all excited to know who the winners are tonight. Um, I've been proud to lead the judging board for the past three years because I think it's really important that we celebrate the very best of what we do and recognise it. But it has to be said that being part of the Walkley Judging Board is a big commitment. So I want to thank all of my fellow Judging Board members for the generosity of their time and experience. They come from all across the industry. 
from all outlets, all organisations. We choose the Walkley winners in each category after the first round judges have named the finalists. And this year we've welcomed a number of new members to the board. Um, we've welcomed Neil Breen, Jane Doyle, Norelda Jacobs, Dean Lewins and Cameron Stewart. So a very warm welcome to all of them. That has meant we've also bid farewell to some people who have been um, giving their time for a number of years and I wanted to really uh, thank um, the, for their contribution John Lehman, Mags King, Heidi Murphy and Patricia Carvelis. Um, I also wanted to thank the judging panels who spent many, many hours judging these awards, watching uh, your stories, listening to the audio, reading your stories. It's a big commitment but it is the essence of the Walkleys because the point is that the excellence of the work is judged by your peers. So I'd like you to all join me in a round of applause for all of the judges who judge the Midyear Walkleys. If, if you're here tonight as a finalist, congratulations. You've done incredibly well to be nominated. Your work is already making a difference in our industry and for our audiences and you'd better start thinking about how you're going to get your entries in for the Walkleys when they open on July 1. Thank you everybody, raise a glass and have a great night. Thank you Lenore and indeed congratulations to everyone who's been nominated tonight. Just a little bit more housekeeping, there are many awards to get through tonight, so keep some fuel in the tank and save your applause and a, remember, a reminder sorry, that the, the only person who giving a speech is the overall Young Journalist Award. All right, let's kickstart the night. We'll be announcing, first of all, the recipient of the Jacoby Walkley Scholarship. Established with the generous support of Anita Jacoby, it recognises the legacy of Anita's father, Philip, a broadcasting pioneer. It provides the opportunity for a young journalist to learn within the Nine Network and the Walkley Foundation with training at afters and the support of a stipend. Please welcome Anita Jacoby to announce the recipient. Thanks everyone. Um, we've all been instructed that we've got two minutes, so this won't be long. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know. I just wanted to acknowledge that million dollars is absolutely phenomenal. And just standing there listening to it, I really, I, I don't know many philanthropists that would do that, so thank you. Um, I also wanted to acknowledge there are three winners of this scholarship that was set up in 2012 and they're currently in the room now. Uh, Lydia Bilton, who's the executive producer of the Nine News Local. Now these are people that got their scholarships maybe three or four years ago and they're already either senior producers or executive producers. Annalise Bolt, who's the senior producer at Nine News and also an EP at the Today Show. And Amber Schultz, who's just been promoted to associate editor of Crikey and an award nominee tonight. I don't know where you are, Amber, but all the best. Yeah, good luck tonight. Um, before announcing uh, this year's winner, but I've actually noticed it's in the program. I didn't realise it was in the program. So um, I'd firstly like to thank Louisa Graham and Lauren Dixon for having the vision to create this scholarship back when we first spoke about it in 2012. And thanks also to Helen Johnson and the Walkley team for all your support with this. I also wanted to have a big shout out to Nines, Darren Wick and Alex Needs, who have been, <coughs> excuse me, so supportive over the years, and to Nell Greenwood and Wendy Gray, who is there, from the Australian Film, Television and Radio School, one of my old alma maters. And a big thank you to this year's judges, Jim Whaley, Jenny Brocky, Kirsty Thompson from 60 Minutes, Tracy Vaux, and Mark Fennell, who's also in a, um, being nominated for an award tonight. So all the best, Mark. Um, I'd also just like to take a moment to pay a special tribute to the much missed Tommy Krauss, who passed away last year. Tom was a judge of this award from day one and his enthusiasm and encouragement for every young person who applied for this scholarship was absolutely remarkable. And I think we all, those of us who knew him, including Janine Perrot who's here today, miss him dearly. And now to this year's winner. Um, before we even interviewed her, our winner impressed with the passion that she exhibited in her application. At seven, she was asked by a teacher to write down what she wanted to be. After considering various options, apparently an astronaut, prime minister, professional scuba diver, she saw a simple image. Her journalist mother 
was with a copy of the Sydney Morning Herald and proudly pointing to her byline. And so at just seven, Ellen McCrindley, McCrindley scrawled the word she hasn't stopped repeating. I want to be a journalist. I really want to be a journalist. So please join me in congratulating Ella on her first step to achieving, achieving this childhood dream. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I almost made the wrong move and went down that way too early. It wasn't pretty. I'm glad no one was here to see it. <laughs> well, fantastic work and our best wishes to Ella. Congratulations. Can't wait to keep watching you do your amazing work. Anita Jacoby's philanthropy in setting up the Jacoby Walkley Scholarship with Nine in 2003 has really laid the runway for, Walkley, for the Walkley Foundation to offer more opportunities for bright young journalists and to find their place in the industry. That brings us nicely to our very next gong, the Win News Scholarship. This is a fabulous opportunity for aspiring journalists aged up to 26 to learn from newsroom leaders and sharpen their reporting skills in broadcast. I'd like to invite WIN Network News Director Stella Laurie, hello, to the stage to present the certificate. All right, and the winner is Scout Wallen. The judges said Scout Wallen showed a clear understanding of issues affecting regional Australia and was able to articulate how those issues could be addressed in a broadcast news environment. They can't wait to have her in their newsroom. Congratulations, Scout. Now, the Walkley Young Indigenous Scholarship was launched in 2020 through the support of BHP, 10 News and Junkie Media. The scholarship provides pathways for promising young First Nations journalists to develop their newsroom experience across a 12-week placement. I'd like to invite Jeremy Milne from BHP to the stage to present the certificate. Right. And the winner is Tani Jash. The judges said, Tani's enthusiasm is infectious. She shows extraordinary drive to develop her journalistic skills while helping advance the conversation around Indigenous issues. We can't wait to see what she achieves at Junkie and 10 News First. Not that way, that way. <laughs> we need another set of stairs, guys. <laughs> in addition to the amazing Foot in the Door scholarships already announced tonight, the Walkley Foundation has partnered with the Judith Nielsen Institute to create the JNI Opportunity Fellowships. These three fellowship placements give talented early career journalists and individuals from diverse backgrounds the chance to develop their journalism careers and build connections. In 2021, the host organisations are Nine Melbourne, with the recipient gaining experience across Nine News, The Age and 3AW, Guardian Australia in Sydney, and the third placement is split between six weeks at 10 News First in Brisbane and then six weeks at the Courier Mail. I'd like to invite Andrea Ho, you're already up here. Welcome, Andrea, from the Judith Nielsen Institute to, st to the stage to present the winner. Thank you. All right. And our three recipients are Jathea Bazir, Trisha Lee Rivera, and Rafik Tuma. Rafika. Congratulations, congratulations, Trisha, Rafika, and Sathya. Our next honour is the Sean Dorney Grant for Pacific Journalism. 
and the winner will receive a $10,000 grant to fund reporting in the Pacific Islands region. This grant is named for an icon of reporting in the region, Sean Dorney. Sean spent more than four decades reporting on Papua New Guinea and the Pacific. Sean is unable to be here tonight, but has sent a special video to congratulate our winner, Natalie Whiting. Hi, I'm Sean Dorney. I'm really sorry that I can't be there with you tonight, but uh, this motor neurone disease that I've got has rather limited my capacity to travel too much. But I'm absolutely delighted to congratulate Natalie Whiting on winning this Sean Dorney Walkley Award for Pacific Journalism. Natalie's proposal to do a story on tribal fighting in collaboration with MTV in Papua New Guinea really impressed all of the judges. But that's not to say there weren't some other really terrific proposals put forward. And I must say, I'm really delighted to be this, this award's named after me. And I'd like to thank the sponsors because they, like I, believe that greater coverage of our neighbours in this region can only be to the benefit of both Australia and them. So thank you very much. Thank you to Sean and congratulations, of course, to Natalie, who is also unable to join us tonight. She's in Papua New Guinea. Accepting on her behalf, though, is Jemima Garrett. Now, the June Andrews Award for Industrial Relations Reporting recognising recognises the outstanding journalism that captures the importance and the complexities of robust industrial relations for Australian workers and businesses. I'd like to invite Dr Cathy O'Hare to the stage to present the trophy. I won't read the winner yet. First, the finalists. <laughs> Kalmany Fraser and Cormac Pearson. Kate Kelly and Ben Schneiders, Royce Miller and Liam Mannix. And the winners, Ben Schneiders, Royce Miller and Liam Mannix. Congratulations. The judges said a powerful and innovative piece of journalism which seamlessly combined data analysis, human storytelling, and good old-fashioned news-breaking techniques to illustrate the causes of the rapid spread of COVID-19 in Melbourne and its devastating impact. Congratulations. <clears throat> Up next is the June Andrews Award for Freelance Journalist of the Year. Recognising the unique and growing contribution freelancers make as they forge their own paths in a tough industry. They're some of our bravest and most creative journalists. I'd like to invite John Myers from Media Super to the stage to pre present the trophy. Okay, the finalists in this category are Camille Bianchi, Nina Fernell. and Andrew Quilty. And the winner is Andrew Quilty. Mark Callanan, Andrew's uncle, will accept the award on his behalf. Hello? <laughs> oh, hurry up. <laughs> Should have waited for Andrew. <laughs> In a strong field of excellent entries, Andrew Quilty's work was a standout. A war on civilians in Afghanistan combines fine on the ground reporting, compelling photography and podcasting to capture the experiences of civilians in the conflict zone. Quilty displayed considerable tenacity and talent to tell those important stories. The June Andrews Award for media, Women's Leadership in Media is up next, honouring and celebrating women who are making a journalistic contribution to gender equality. 
The award is supported by PwC, and I'd like to invite Diane Rutter to the stage to say a few words before we announce the winner. Good evening. It's an absolute pleasure to be with you here this evening. PwC Australia is delighted to sponsor the Women's Leadership in Media Award for the, the sixth consecutive year. We thank the Walkley Foundation for this continued opportunity. The Women's Leadership in Media Award reflects the critical role the media plays in improving community perceptions of gender equality issues, in particular, highlighting where we need to do so much better. Starting conversations through reporting about the challenges women face is crucial in breaking down the deep conscious and unconscious stereotypes and behaviours that disempower women. These stories also help us to be better equipped to solve society's most significant problems because we are able to view them through a more holistic lens. The three finalists this year have made incredibly valuable contributions to the public debate on matters of sexual assault, how we respond to allegations of sexual harassment and rape in the workplace, education on consent and violence against women and children. I want to applaud, applaud all of the finalists for the Women's Leadership in Media Award and personally thank each of you for your role in shining a light on these issues and helping to change community perceptions. On behalf of PwC, I congratulate all of you, the nominees, and wish you the very best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. And the finalists in this category are Nina Fernell, Kerry Warren, Gina McWilliams, Hannah Stenning, and Georgia Kate Schubert. Samantha Maiden. And Sherelle Moody. And the winner is... Nina Fernell, Kerry Warren, Gina McWilliams, Hannah Stenning and Georgia Kate Schubert. Congratulations. Let Her Speak is an outstanding entry in an outstanding field. It led to the laws being changed in three jurisdictions sparked a national conversation about sexual assault and resulted in one of the women involved in the campaign, Grace Tame, being named Australian of the Year. It's courageous, transformative journalism. Congratulations. Congratulations. The Our Watch Award for Excellence in Reporting on Violence Against Women and Children exists to reward journalists for playing a part in changing those attitudes and stopping violence before it starts. I'd like to invite Deputy Chair of the Our Watch Board, Dr Phil Lambert, to the stage to say a few words before we announce the winner. Good evening. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land in which we meet, the Gadigal people of the great Eora Nation, and I pay my respects to their elders past and present. I also pay my respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here with us. It's a real honour to be here. The work you do as journalists with integrity and under great pressure continues to inspire me and all of us at Our Watch. And congratulations to our finalists, Avni Diaz, Samantha Maiden, and Lisa Wilkinson. All we have to do is look at the stories you've submitted to see the tremendous power of the media to hold all, including the powerful, to account, to influence community attitudes, and to shape the public conversation to drive social change. The exceptional quality of your stories reflects a year of impressive work from journalists who have done so much to bring the issue of violence against women to public and political attention and to keep it there. We know this violence can take many forms. Homicide is just the tip of the iceberg. Violence occurs along a spectrum. It can include relationship and family violence, dating violence, workplace sexual harassment and street harassment, 
financial abuse, image-based online abuse, and a range of controlling behaviours known as coercive control. Excellence in reporting in this area requires expertise, building trust with the family violence sector, interviewing survivors of violence and upholding their dignity, as well as navigating complex legal considerations. And we know it can take an emotional drain and toll on you. Good reporting can mean the difference between a woman staying silent or having the courage to disclose the abuse she's experienced. It can mean a perpetrator feeling like he'll get away with it or knowing that his behaviour will be condemned. Good reporting can shine a light on the systemic and leadership failures that contribute to an environment where women are silenced and violence is normalised. The research shows that it's gender inequality that sets the underlying context for violence against women. The drivers of this violence are gendered. They include the condoning of violence against women, rigid gender stereotypes, male control of decision-making in private and public life, and male friendships and forms of masculinity that emphasise disrespect towards women. When reporting correctly identifies and reports on these underlying drivers of violence against women, you not only give survivors a voice, you improve the public's understanding of this issue and of why the violence occurs in the first place. This is why the media is a key setting for our watchers' work to prevent violence against women. It remains our privilege to work with you. Thank you, Phil. Very important points made there. Okay, the finalists in this category are Avani Dias, Angela McCormack, Ali Russell and Laura McAuliffe. <laughs> Samantha Maiden. And Lisa Wilkinson, Angus Llewellyn and Georgia Dunn. And the winner is Samantha Maiden. Congratulations. Samantha Maiden's work showed enterprise, tenacity and compassion while displaying her mastery of reporting on the political process. This led to a number of reviews at Parliament House which have the potential to improve safety for women in politics. Congratulations, Samantha. <laughs> Our next award tonight is the Media Diversity Award. This award is supported by CoHealth and the National Ethnic and Multicultural Broadcasters Council. We'd like to invite Media Diversity Australia's Antoinette Latouf to the stage to present the trophy. And the finalists in this category are Rebecca Armstrong, Angela Leonardi, Quinton McDermott and Helen Grasswell. <laughs> Mark Fennell, Agnes Teak, Josh McNamee and Georgina Davis. And Jason Om, Alex McDonald and RK Priantari. All right, and the winner, Jason Om, Alex McDonald and RK Priantari. Congratulations. <laughs> the judging panel agreed that price of convenience exposed the real world tragedy of the fast food industry in a society expecting more immediacy in all aspects of life. The investigation brought the lack of legal and other industry protections to light. <laughs> With him, was that a swear word, Jason? <laughs> they just censor this guy. <laughs> uh, where was I? The investigation brought the lack of legal and other industry protections to light within fast food delivery services. Congratulations. <laughs> Jason, take your award and go. <laughs> Okay, moving along. <laughs> Millions of people around the world feel the humanitarian fallout from conflict every day. Is he still going? <laughs> Here, do you want this too? <laughs> 
The Humanitarian Storytelling Award seeks to elevate the unheard stories of communities affected by armed conflict and other forms of violence. It celebrates storytelling that does no harm and recognises the role that journalists play in defending dignity and highlighting that even war has limits. The award is supported by the International Committee for the Red Cross and we invite Walkley director Marcus Strom to the stage to present the trophy. The finalists in this category are Bo Donnelly and Christopher Hopkins, Andrew Quilty, Tracy Shelton, Jared Funkhauser, and Alan Whedon. And the winner is Andrew Quilty. And let's hope that his uncle gets up here a bit faster. Mark Callanan will accept it on his behalf. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> You've had practice. The judges said this is what journalism is about. Andrew Quilty focused on telling the people's stories and exposing the truth, despite putting himself in grave danger to tell the stories that demand to be told. Quilty's continued in-depth coverage, years of research, intimate knowledge of the people, culture, country, and the conflict that continues to destroy their lives of so many generations has come, is so evident. Now tonight, we are announcing the winners of two arts prizes, the June Andrews Award for Arts Journalism and the Pascal Prize for Arts Criticism. Through the support of the copyright agency Cultural Fund, both winners will each receive $5,000 in prize money. Fine Arts Journalism. Sorry, let me start that again. First, arts journalism. <laughs> it's a fine art, right? <laughs> I'd like to invite Walkley director Michael Yanda to the stage to present the trophy. Thank you, Michael. <clears throat> okay, the finalists in this category are Kelly Burke, <laughs> Alison Crogan, And Mark Fennell, Zoe Ferguson, Amrutha Slee, and Martin Peralta. <laughs> All right. And the winner is Kelly Burke. <laughs> the judges said Kelly Burke's reports into the treatment of performers of colour on Neighbours revealed deeply troubling systemic problems within one of Australia's most lucrative and iconic cultural exports. While scrutiny of representation in media increases, Burke's reports critically investigated how casting and plot lines can conceal deeply racist attitudes and behaviours. Now to the Pascal Prize for Arts Criticism, which celebrates the unique contribution of critics to our cultural landscape. I'd like to invite Guy Johnson from the Copyright Agency to the stage to present this award. And the finalists are Anwen Crawford, Madeline Joanna Gray, and Sheila Nock Pham. And the winner is Anwen Crawford. Anwen is unwell tonight, but Walkley director Marcus Strom will collect the award on Anwen's behalf. The judges said of Anwen's work, three critical essays were engaging and entertaining. They displayed a shrewd storytelling ability, depth of musical knowledge, and an original perspective while maintaining an insightful awareness of how their subjects relate to the broader cultural context. Congratulations. <clears throat> All right, now to the Young Journalist Awards, celebrating emerging talent, open to the journalists aged 28 and younger. We're starting with the Student Journalist of the Year. Twitter supports this award and we invite Cara Hinesley to the stage to present the trophy. The finalists are Emily Cowell, Giorgio Patis, I'm going a bit fast, aren't I? <laughs> and Stephanie Tran. And the winner is 
Giorgio Platius. The judges said, a beautifully moving piece which transfixes the viewer and is relentlessly thought-provoking. Giorgio has demonstrated sensitivity, intelligence and great skill in this work. We look forward to seeing <laughs> we look forward to seeing where his significant journalistic talents lead him. Congratulations, Giorgio. <laughs> Next up is the short short form journalism category, and I invite Gavin Fang from the ABC to the stage to present. The finalists in this category are Natasia Krianthios, <laughs> Annabelle Hennessy, and Paul Sakal. And the winner is Paul Sakal, all the way from Melbourne. Congratulations, Paul. You made it. <laughs> you got out of Melbourne. We might have to quarantine on our way back though, Paul. <laughs> the judges said Paul Sakal's outstanding series of exclusive stories exposed the problems in Victoria's hotel quarantine system. He gained the trust of whistleblowers and in the face of government denials showed skill and tenacity to reveal some of the most sh some of the serious shortcomings that led to the state's deadly second wave. Next up is long form journalism. Please welcome the editor of the Sydney Morning Herald, Lisa Davies, to the stage to present the trophy. The finalists in this category are Radula Arman. <laughs> Luke Enriquez Gomes and Patrick Martin. And the winner is Murdula Arman. Congratulations. <laughs> Through persistence and curiosity, Arman gained the trust of residents to share their stories of hardship. Armand's investigation empowered them to fight for their homes inside one of Sydney's last long-term caravan parks. This story is a lesson in compassionate reporting, while also challenging the park's wealthy investors' financial history. A perfectly captured portrait of humanity. This way up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Congratulations. Some of Australia's best reporters have begun their careers in regional or community news outlets. So it's great to see such a strong field in this next category. The award is supported by Google News Initiative and the trophy will be presented by Nick Popkins. The finalists in this category are Brianna Fiore, Kieran Pender, and Eamon Snow. <laughs> and the winner is Brianna Fiore. Congratulations. The judges said Brianna's initiative to start a beat for her Filipino community ultimately led to the exposure of Bun Bunbury Hospital's toxic culture and fatal failings, including the death of a mother during childbirth. The relationships and trust she forged resulted in breaking stories that ensured the issues were not only brought to light, but investigated by authorities. Congratulations. Next up is the innovative and inspiring world of visual storytelling. This award is supported by Maclay College and I invite Sue Stevenson to the stage to present this trophy. The finalists are Radula Arman, Tom Joyner, and Rebecca Metcalf and David Ma. <coughs> and the winner is Radula Arman. <laughs> Hope you didn't go far. <laughs> 
This was an outstanding body of work. Madula's photography was intimate and compassionate, a payoff for the time and determination she put into pursuing the stories. Her shots were technically impressive, making great use of light and composition. The substantial impact of her work has had an impact on communities in Western Sydney, and it's a testament to Madula's skills. Yeah, this way now. <laughs> Our next award is Public Service Journalism. The award is supported by News Corp Australia and I'd like to invite Walkley Judging Board Member Claire Harvey to present the trophy. The finalists are Brooke Fryer, Annabelle Hennessy and Amber Schultz. And the winner is Annabelle Hennessy. <laughs> Annabelle's series of stories on the tragic death of Annalise Hugel was public interest journalism at its best. She gave a voice to the most voiceless in the community, an Indigenous child who was not only the victim of alleged sexual abuse, but Western Australia's justice and housing systems too. Annabelle broke the story and then followed through with powerful and incisive reporting. Congratulations. All right, now it's time for the biggie, the hotly anticipated Walkley Young Australian Journalist of the Year Award. Thanks to the support of the Jib Foundation, the winner will receive a bumper prize Two weeks visiting US newsrooms, including Columbia Journalism Review, Courts and BuzzFeed, with return flights included. Hopefully that's not far off. <laughs> All category winners will also get the opportunity to learn from industry leaders through the Walkley Mentor Program and receive a complimentary place in an AGSM short course at University of New South Wales Business School. As Louisa announced earlier, John B. Fairfax and his family have made an extraordinary gift of $1 million dollars over the next 10 years to support even more professional development for the winners of these awards. I'd like to now invite John B. Fairfax to the stage to say a few words. Well, thank you, Sarah, and thank you, Louisa, and may I say what an honour it is to be here again this evening uh, and to talk about uh, young journalists uh, uh, in, in toto, really. Um, uh, and so it's on behalf of my family, uh, the Jib Foundation, that I'm delighted to make uh, this 10-year uh, commitment to supporting emerging talent in a field that is close to my heart and, of course, to my family's heritage. It's also wonderful to provide significant long-term support to the Walkley Foundation, which has celebrated uh, the work of hundreds of impressive journalists, many of whom were, in fact, Fairfax journalists. The work of the Walkley Foundation embodies integrity and quality, which to me, and I'm sure to you also, is at the heart of good, responsible journalism. Now, the JIP Foundation was established uh, to support organisations led by exceptional people striving to improve uh, equality of opportunity for others. And the Walkley Awards, especially the Young Journalist of the Year Award, uh, fits uh, this criteria admirably. And you may wonder, but we intentionally uh, named the JIB Foundation with an element of anonymity, and it's uh, J for John, you can get that one, and <laughs> uh, IBB Libby, which is my wife, and unfortunately she's not here with us tonight. But it, uh, as I say, it, it did uh, give us a degree of anonymity, just as I was happy and delighted for many years to operate under the umbrella, uh, quietly, of, of the umbrella of rural press. But the Fairfax name was retained for almost uh, 180 years as publishers of quality journalism. 
That changed with the Nine Takeover. That's all I said. I mean, all <laughs> But uh, Jib's, uh, Jib's commitment uh, to this award reconnects the Fairfax legacy to a tradition of journalism that is well recognised and typifies some of the attributes that made Fairfax a highly regarded brand, respected by our communities and especially by you journalists. I well recall the voice of incredulity when in my reporting days I said I was, uh, oh look, I'm John Fairfax from the Sydney Morning Herald. They didn't believe it for one moment and on one occasion when I was talking to a policeman uh, about a noise that was uh, emanating or became a complaint from a Potts, uh, Potts Point resident, uh, the constable said, oh, Mr Fairfax? Yes, sir, we'll get someone down there right away. <laughs> How things have changed. But it does give us great satisfaction to support the Young Journalist of the Year Award alongside the Walkley Foundation. And may I say too that I, I really appreciate the support of um, Michelle Gorton who uh, looks after, holds my hand on philanthropic issues. And the, as you all know, it's quite hard to make money, but she's terrific at giving it away <laughs> and helps me enormously. But I hope that in 10 years time, why I might once again be invited to make a few remarks and be able to reflect on the outstanding talent of those who have received the award. As we see daily, goodness, we certainly do, as we see daily, there are so many important stories to be told and we need you, trusted journalists, to tell them. Thank you, John. That's a bit cheeky, but I suppose if you're going to wave a million dollar cheque, you can probably get away with sledges, sledges like that, right? <laughs> I won't tell you I'm a nine journalist. No? no? Okay. <laughs> All right. As we said before, the biggie is upon us. It's the 2021 Young Journalist of the Year. And the winner is... Radula Arman. Congratulations, Radula. The judges said, sensitive, compassionate, and beautifully shot, Mridula Arman's hidden park of last resort is a wonderful human story well told, gaining the trust of the residents and demonstrating a non-judgmental approach to her reporting. Arman's investigation empowered the community to fight for their homes inside one of Sydney's last long-term caravan parks. Congratulations, Mridula. And of course, please come to the lectern now to say a few words. <laughs> Put those guys there. Um, wow, what a surreal moment. Um, I did prepare something just in case this moment happened. Um, so sorry if I'm a bit shaky. So firstly, thank you so much to the Walkley Foundation and the judging panel for this huge honour. Um, and I congratulate my fellow nominees. It was, you guys really made me sweat. So thank you so much for your incredible work in journalism. Um, I didn't get here alone, so I want to thank a few people, but obviously it's probably a million that I need to thank. Um, but firstly, my ABC News editors, Mark Davies, Julia Vetter, and Riley Stewart. Um, Mark, firstly, thank you for hiring me, but um, Mark and Julia, thank you for your vision and believing my storytelling and your empathetic leadership really makes a difference. Riley Stewart, Riley Stewart, my digital editor. While I will continue to argue with you every day for my more time on my deadline, um, your mentor mentorship has been invaluable. So thank you. To the background briefing team, you made you know you made my first long form audio piece so beautiful, um, and I can't list all of you in this thing, but you made it so beautiful. Thank you, Alice Brennan, for your energy and just being so damn smart. Tim Roxburgh, you're a narrative genius and I couldn't have done this without you. And of course, Jeff Thompson, thanks for all the gummy snakes, sleeping on a caravan floor with me and your crucial work in creating this story with me. 
um, and Matt Henry for your beautiful production and editing. Also, for my visual storytelling nomination, thank you to Jennifer Samuel at National Geographic, who made a photojournalist's wildest dreams come true. Um, it's one of the greatest privileges of my life to be a journalist and to be entrusted to tell the stories um, of a side of humanity that we rarely see. Without the trust of all the people in my stories over months, if not years, none of what I do would be possible. So thank you to them. And of course, thank you to my family and friends um, for reminding me what's important in life. Thank you so much. Do you need a hand there or are you yeah. good? <laughs> Don't, go. Okay, Don't go that way. <laughs> what a truly inspirational journalist, inspirational journalist. Can't wait to see what you do next. Well, that's it for tonight, guys. Enjoy all your prizes to the winners and congratulations to everyone nominated. A sincere thank you to our partners and supporters. Now, we'll need all of our winners to come to the stage before you run away for a group photo, so please make your way up here now. Don't come this way. Thanks, everybody, for being here tonight and celebrating Australian journalism. Hope you enjoy yourselves. Thank you. Thank you.